Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Clutter. I'm your host, Margot Statton, a professional organizer specializing in chronic clutter. Imagine if each day of the week was 25 hours. What would you do with the extra seven hours each week? Maybe you would finally have time to take a bath, a walk, read a book, or binge the new show on Prime. Maybe you can squeeze in a few minutes to journal or do some yoga. As a working mom, I used to always say there are not enough hours in a day. All that changed once I built simple daily home habits that have saved me, or rather given me back, tons of time. From easy cleaning routines to to to-do lists that literally take 30 seconds to create, making my morning school drop off a breeze. Today, I want to share with you a list of 21 of those incredibly simple habits. Habit number one is prepping my coffee the night before. I don't know about you, but the fresh scent of coffee in the morning always puts me in a good mood. The night before, I will fill two pods, placing one of them in my Keurig. Once I get up, all I have to do is press the brew button and I am in business. While the coffee brews, I drink my morning glass of water, which too has been set out on my kitchen counter. By the time I'm done, the coffee is ready. The second habit that has saved me so much time and actually has saved me money is keeping a notepad in the kitchen. This simple notepad is divided into two parts. The top are my cleaning tasks for the week, which truth be told, repeat every week, but it's nice to have them in front of me as a reminder because let's face it, some weeks can get a little crazy. The bottom part is my shopping list. This is great because as I run out of things throughout the week, I can simply write the items down so that when Saturday rolls around, all I do is tear off the bottom portion and take it with me to the supermarket. This actually saves a ton of time and money. You don't have to run inventory in your refrigerator and your pantry, and you never buy anything that you don't need. Which leads me to simple habit number three, and that is to have designated days for specific cleaning tasks. I used to spend hours each Sunday cleaning my home. Now, as a mom, weekends are much better spent doing activities, taking my daughter to the park, the play gym, Dave and Buster's, not stuck at home cleaning. I would be exhausted by the time I was done and I barely had energy to do anything else. Ever since I designated cleaning tasks to specific days, not only do I have weekends free, But cleaning takes me half the time because there are no more long, exhausting marathons. Monday, I actually have no chores. Tuesday, laundry and cleaning the bathroom. Wednesday, I dust and I vacuum. And Thursday, I wash my plants and my floors. That is it. Simple habit number four, tidying up the night before, which does include the dishes. Another thing that has saved me a ton of time on cleaning is tidying up daily. Simply putting things back where they belong at the end of the day is life-changing. If you are to adapt any one of these habits, this is a great one to start with. You've no doubt heard experts talk about evening reset routines, and maybe you are a non-believer, but I promise you, it works. Also, I don't know about you, but I don't like waking up to a messy house. It immediately causes me stress and anxiety. Number five, picking out mine and my daughter's clothing the night before. This is something I've done for years, and it's such a small thing, but picking out mine and her clothing the night before is a game changer. In the morning, while I'm making her breakfast, taking the dog out, finishing packing her lunch, getting her ready, and myself, and running out the door to make it in time for school drop-off, every little minute counts. And choosing clothing the night before saves a few minutes each morning. My daughter is now nine years old and has picked up the habit of picking out her own clothing which is another wonderful thing that happens. Our kids will pick up a lot of our habits, which will serve them into adulthood. Number six, waking up before my daughter does. I was never a morning person. I've always been more productive at night. And the thought of waking up even 15 minutes earlier was like being shot in the chest. Once I had my daughter though, waking up at the same time as her made me feel like I was rushing the moment my eyes popped open. And this again gave me a ton of anxiety all day. I didn't like it. I heard so many other people say that they wake up early and journal, do yoga. I was like, what the hell are you all smoking? Why would you do that to yourself? Regardless, the logical brain in me was like, all these people can be wrong. So I decided to give it a try. The first week it sucked. I was groggy and angry at the world. I would snooze the alarm multiple times. It was a mess. 
By week two, it started to get a little bit easier and 30 days in, I actually started to enjoy it and create a morning routine that set my day up for success and put me in a good headspace. I now love my mornings and don't get me wrong, I will sleep in if I get a chance such as vacation or days my daughter's off from school. However, I love the quiet in the morning. I put on a little Michael Buble, I listen to my coffee machine brew, I journal some, meditate, and sometimes just relax in my favorite chair, setting my intentions for the day. If you're someone who's like, eh, that is not for me, give it a try. And let me know after 30 days how you feel. Small home habit number seven is keeping my cleaning supplies where I use them. I'm all about saving time and good organization is key, which is why this next habit anyone can do and it's to keep your cleaning supplies where you use them. Now you might not think too much time is wasted running to the laundry room for bathroom spray, but it compounds. Doing this also keeps your home cleaner. Not convinced? Here's an example. You're in the bathroom and you notice a mess on the sink. You wanna clean it up, so you start heading over to the other room to get the cleaning supplies, and your son distracts you with a story about his day. That sink isn't getting cleaned, because you have now moved on to something completely different and forgot all about it. Trust me, I've been there. Now, if the spray and microfiber cloth was in your bathroom, you'd clean it right up and keep it moving. This next habit is so simple and is life saving and it is to keep wipes in your bathroom. Let me explain. I started keeping wipes in the bathroom years ago when my daughter was just a baby, mainly for her. But then I realized that I started using the wipes to wipe the toilet or quickly pick up toothpaste off the counter or these days remove paint from the sink courtesy of my daughter. This next one is actually kind of funny and has worked to combat my hatred for dishes. I used to have one of those metal drying racks because we don't have a dishwasher in the house. First of all, it was bulky and visually cluttersome. Second, it made me incredibly lazy. And I'm being honest here, I treated it like the kitchen cabinet, leaving my dishes in the rack until I used them the next time. And it actually drove me crazy. And one day, my uh, anxiety was really, really bad. And I tend to stress clean when that happens. And the drying rack caught my eye and made it twitch. So I just kind of went atomic and I threw it out. It was gross and rusty. So long story short, I had one of these drying mats. So I laid it down by the sink and something miraculous happened. One, it did not look messy. And two, for some strange reason I cannot explain, it forced me to start putting my dishes away in the cabinets. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little nuts. Drop a comment. Let me know if this is something that has worked for you in the past. But getting rid of like the drying rack and replacing it with a mat has been like life saving. Habit number 11 is keeping a bin in my entryway instead of a shoe rack. Our entryways get very crowded and messy, especially when they are small or rather non-existent. I feel like we are taught to put shoes on a shoe rack or in the closet, yet this is something that never really worked in my house. The closet was never opened and shoes were being dropped next to the rack instead of on it. Maybe because they would just slide right off, I don't know. So to solve this problem, I essentially built a new shoe habit. I bought this pretty bin and we now just throw the shoes in the bin and it works seamlessly for my family. Habit number 12 was investing in my air fryer. Oh. <laughs> Ever since I've invested in the air fryer, I literally am like, how did I live without this thing? All food is cooked in at least half the time and there is zero mess. And full transparency, I now use my oven to store my pots and pans because I never turn it on. Now on to probably the most life-changing habits of all, and it is to have microfiber cloths around the house. Yes, I have one on top of my faucet, and I'm gonna let you know why. This is an incredible habit that literally takes a few seconds and keeps your, your home clean, well, rather your kitchen sink clean all the time. Kitchens get super messy very, very quick. Around the sink area, we often have water buildup, mildew, grease, grime, you name it. I keep my microfiber cloth on top of my kitchen faucet and every time I finish washing dishes, I grab it and wipe around my sink and kitchen counter. Seriously, 
game changing. This next one saves a ton of time and eliminates decision fatigue. And it's having only two cleaners for my entire house. I used to have a ton because TikTok can be very convincing and this made cleaning more time consuming. I realized that a good multi-purpose cleaner can be used on most surfaces and a glass cleaner for mirrors. There's absolutely no need to have much more. Number 15 is watering my plants in the tub. This habit is both time saving and therapeutic. So I have over 60 plants in my house and watering them one by one used to take like half a day. It's also not good practice because the water should drain and we need to ensure that we're watering them enough. So those days are over. Now, every Thursday morning, I water my plants in batches in the tub. I've noticed that also this decreases my anxiety because I don't know, maybe connecting to nature makes me feel more at peace. It could also be the sound of the run water I don't know the best habit I built was downsizing my wardrobe the decision fatigue would drive me nuts what to wear not being able to find the shirt I was looking for the clothing would take up too much space when we didn't have enough closet space to go around it was absolute madness I have been successfully capsule wardrobing for several years and I'm literally down to two dresser drawers of clothing now I know that this might be extreme for you and full transparency this did not happen overnight but rather took several decluttering attempts to master. And I couldn't be happier because it literally takes me 30 seconds to decide what to wear. Life-saving habit number 17 is investing in a charging station. Ever since I invested in a multi-device charging station, I am no longer running around like a chicken without a head looking for a charger. My daughter would take one sometimes and forget where she put it. I would waste so much time trying to locate it or trying to locate an outlet to plug it into. Now all of our devices are comfortably in one place. Habit number 18 was falling in love with my Alexa. Amazon Alexa is my girl. She is literally my administrative assistant, my companion, my health coach, reminding me to eat, take breaks, what to shop for, etc. This habit of using her saves me a ton of time each and every day. She has made my life so much easier from giving me a quick recipe tip to playing my favorite music all day, all at my fingertips. I absolutely love her. This next habit is for dog owners. I have an awesome rescue pup named Coffee and she obviously loves to go outside. She also loves to dig outside. So while that's super cute, she brings a ton of dirt back into the house and it drives me nuts. So here is my incredible habit for dog owners and it's to place a box of wipes at your entryway. And once you come back from a walk with your dog before they're let loose into the rest of the house, simply wipe their paws. Habit number 20 is incredibly important and keeps my home as close to clutter free as possible. Once I completed my massive year long decluttering journey, I have since then incorporated little habits daily, weekly and monthly that keep clutter from getting out of hand in my home. For example, I will declutter my daughter's paperwork bin monthly. I will go through clothing seasonally. I will toss items right away instead of holding on to them. It's those one second decisions of toss or keep. The truth is that decluttering is not a once and done deal. It requires maintenance just like cleaning your home does. So a great habit is to add some decluttering to your weekly cleaning routine. Habit 21 that has saved me a ton of time contributing to that extra one hour each day and that is to pack my daughter's lunch as much of it as possible or rather prep it the night before. This habit has been fantastic and has really streamlined my morning making it less hectic with less things to do. And finally it is a one second habit and it'll actually help you to seamlessly easily declutter your wardrobe. I've actually taught this decluttering habit to many of my clients and they all absolutely love it. And what the habit is, is take a second of your time right now, take a bin, box or bag and place it in your closet. Okay. And then every single day, multiple times a day, whatever, whenever you go into your wardrobe or your closet to pick out an item of clothing, if you encounter an item where you're like, I'm never going to wear this, right? Instead of putting it back on the hanger, drop it in the bin. Keep doing that until the bin is full. And once it's full, then you either toss or donate. That becomes your decluttering bin and you literally invested zero time into doing it. So that is my list of daily habits that have completely changed my life. I hope that you found them helpful. As always, thank you so much for listening. Good luck on your decluttering journey and remember to be good to yourself.